All right, Alexander, let's answer uh, the questions that came in during our live stream with uh, Robert Barnes. And let's just uh, jump into it and get through these questions. We have a lot of great questions that were sent to us from uh, our viewers. So let's start with uh, P. Walker, who says, amazing how quickly we went from punch an NAZI to give NAZI's unlimited numbers of shoulder-mounted anti-aircraft missiles and grenade launchers. It, it, it is amazing is just the right word. Yeah. Uh, Imre says, wow, I'm not an hour late this time. Good day. Good day, Imran. Imre. Uh, NR, thank you for that super sticker. Task Force, thank you for that super chat. Uh, Ricey says, does the EU does the EU have the Johnson to stand up against the USA? <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 U, the EU is even more enthusiastic about all of this than the USA is. You have more doubts about this in the USA than you have in the EU. The, the uh, EU leaders who are in trouble are the ones who are seen as being soft, <laughs> not, not those who want to escalate. At least that's the case for the moment. Of course, it may change, but there's no, uh, there's no pressure on to change course. And of course, Johnson in Britain is uh, basically jumped on this bandwagon himself. Yeah. Hazim, thank you for that uh, super chat. Hazim, thank you. Uh, Jay Rillo says, how does Mariupol falling change the war, if at all? I think it does change the war because um, what the Russians can then do is that they can reassign their assault forces to attack in other places. And um, that's a significant number of extremely effective. Some of their best troops have been involved in capturing Mariupol, so if they can then reassign them, they can use them to attack other places as well. Kaliu says, you guys look sad and tired these days. Please take care of yourselves. Well, we are, we are, we are tired. <laughs> that, that, that indisputable. I hope we're not looking too sad. Though these, are, these, are, these are stressful times. Yeah, it's stressful times. And uh, mm. what's going on with uh, Gonzalo is, is a bit stressful. It's very, very, very stressful. Um, I, I still remain um, hopeful. Well, well, I was going to say, I mean, at the moment, it must be stressed. We're getting lots of reports, but we've got no confirmation from anybody. That's all I'm going to say. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to give up hope now. Exactly, exactly. Hazim says, is the Wagner Group real and is it operating in Ukraine now? Yes, is the answer. It's both real and it is operating in Ukraine. Roman, thank you for that super sticker. FL64 says, those allegations towards Le Pen are a decade old. Yes, we covered yes. that. Mm. Robert Barnes covered that as well. Yes, they are a decade old. Uh, RDDR says, liberalism failed its post-Cold War democratic mandate of uniting capitalist nations. The proof is Russia, Turkey, Poland, Hungary, and Trump slash Brexit. Yes, I think that's entirely right. But it was, you know, always we should be clear that, you know, we... We, when we talk about neo, neoliberalism and all of that sort of thing, I mean, we're talking about an ideology of an extremely small but very powerful and very wealthy group of people. Yeah. Dimitra K says, you are my daily vitamin D, gentlemen. Excellent work. Thank, Thank you. you. Dimitra for that. Not Intimidated says, what did you think of uh, Kaja Ekis Ekman getting fired from her journalist job in Sweden by asking about the NAZI connection in the Kiev Independent? Well, there you go. I mean, are you surprised? Are you surprised? I mean, I've been reading. I've been reading all kinds of articles about Azov, the Azov Group, in uh, the British media, in places like the BBC and the Guardian. And I have to say, I mean, I, I, I'm absolutely shocked by the way in which they go out of their way to try to sugar it, pretend it's something different from what it is. Uh, 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 and rationalise it away. So, especially in a place where Sweden, where there's been a historic problem of that kind of thing, um, one can imagine that this person was touching on a very sensitive issue. Yeah. Steve-O says, uh, if Le Pen wins, how do you think that would affect the globalist agenda? If Le Pen wins. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's wait and see. I mean, you know, uh, I am not sure... I say this straight away, that she will make as much difference as people think she will. What might make a difference is the effect of the French voting for her. But I prefer to 
hold back from that kind of discussion until I know the result. Yeah, I agree with you there. Um, MDU, Sabanda, thank you for that super sticker. Uh, Alexander Krastev, thank you for that super sticker. Sparky says, Viva Le Pen, Viva La France. Thank you, Sparky, for that. Sanjeva, part one of two, says, while the EU and the USA double down on sanctions and continue on their PR gobbledygook crisis, uh, gobbledygook circus, sorry, gobbledygook circus, the South is entering famine. Hundreds of millions of people who made it into the middle class are now right back in poverty. This process started in part because the South idiotically followed the West in lockdowns and get up the COOF rankings. The QE in USA decimated the South. The South might never forgive the West for this. I completely agree with all of that. And of course, what is the response in the West? It is to blame Putin. I, I, I mean, I read an, art, an editorial in the Financial Times of all places, which says it's all Putin's fault. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gabrielle McMillan says, shutting down nuclear plants is crazy. That's a quote from Elon Musk. Yeah, very true. I know, I know, uh, I know. But you know, explain, argue that with the Greens. I mean, you know, in Germany especially. I mean, on this. By the way, the Greens started as an anti-nuclear power, anti-nuclear group, both nuclear weapons and nuclear power. It's you know foundational to them. Jay Kaiser, thank you for that super chat. PJM says no questions. Thank you, Dorian. Uh, without Without you, without we, without we wouldn't be here. Without we, we wouldn't be here. Huh? Love the okay. cigar, love the chair and cigar, Mr. Barnes. Any scotch. Thank you very much, PJM, okay. for that. Lisa, thank you for that super sticker. Valies, thank you for that super chat. Sparky says, if she wins, Le Pen should conspire with Erdogan to militarily take over continental Europe. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be interesting. Uh, France and Turkey have had histories of being allies, by the way. So I think I think Louis XIV, for example, got on reasonably well with the Sublime Port, the Turkish government of its day. So who knows, you know, revive historic alliances. <laughs> Uh, Kyle, thank you for that super sticker. V Plan, thank you for that super sticker. Uh, French Honey Badger says it's pronounced uh, Melanchon and not Melanchon. Oh, right, okay, thank sorry. I, 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 Melanchon, yeah, I've heard that. Sure. Okay. Uh, uh, Ryan says, is it possible to briefly discuss the makeup of the French electorate? electorate? When was the last time populist right had a big lasting win in France? What are the strongholds? What is the right made up of? Oh, that is an enormous question. Quick. I think that's the sort of thing. A, well, I mean, France basically, video, divide, probably. it's a separate video. It is a separate video. But it, there's the metropolitan cities. There's Paris, which is a world unto itself. There were the former industrial areas, places like Lorraine, and uh, especially in the north of France, which were used to be the you know working class areas, which used to be the fortresses of the French Communist Party. They're now voting principally for people like Le Pen. There's also uh, rural flat France, which is very divided. Some parts of rural flat France are um, historically very left-wing, in part because of traditions extending all the way back to the French Revolution, but also because of the fact that you know French farmers tend to like interventionist, you know, statist economic policies. And then, of course, there's also a very large immigrant community in France. I believe it's got the largest Muslim population in Europe. And that, of course, is a major political factor, electoral factor now in any election. And then, of course, as in many, many countries, there are age differences. So old people tend to support the status quo, people like Macron. Macron wins heavily amongst older voters, younger voters to divide between Mélenchon and Le Pen. All right. Uh, SSSSS says uh, nothing, just a super chat. Thank you for that. SSSSSS, five S's. Uh, five S's also says French Muslims uh, say picking between the sitting president and Marine Le Pen is like choosing between the plague and cholera. I've heard the same. Yeah. I've heard that for the first time, uh, there are even some French Muslims who are contemplating voting for Le Pen, which is extraordinary. But, I mean, that's also partly because she's changed her policy so much. Um, let's see. Cloud9 Ninja says, uh, just out on Zero Hedge, Europe plans to announce a full embargo on Russian oil yeah. next week after Macron gets elected. Will the, stupid, yeah. will the stupidity never cease? Hmm. Well, it, 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 it's absolutely true. I mean, can I just say 
they announced an embargo on coal, Russian coal, which is a major problem for many European countries, but especially for Germany, which relies heavily on Russian coal. The Russians had no difficulty finding finding buyers for all that coal. They will find buyers for their oil too. The people who will pay for this are the Europeans because they're cutting themselves out from cheap oil from Russia, adapted to their needs, which is supplied to them via pipelines, not in super tankers and ships. So it's cheaper. So they're going to be substituting more expensive products for cheaper ones. But that's what they've decided to do. Jeff R says, I would think the French vote with their pocketbook. Inflation is killing people there. Wouldn't people say enough with Macron? He's killing everyday life in France. Once upon a time, you could say that in every Western... Yeah, we'll find out. Every Western electorate used to vote with its pocketbook, and that was always a sensible way of voting, in my opinion. Today, ideology is such a powerful force. And when I say ideology, we know what I'm talking about. You know, the kind of ideology that, um, you know, is all about identity things and all that kind of thing. That, unfortunately, seems to persuade many voters to vote against their economic interests. Uh, Fox Drake says, Tom's River, New Jersey, he's a blowhard, know-it-all, with all the answers, but where is Gonzalo Lira? He's no Russian spy, a loud mouth, sure, but he's, but, he, but is the Ukraine position so weak they can't take his criticism? If killed, Russia wins the info war. Well, well, I mean, I, I, it is weak, <laughs> and they're very angry because they're very frightened, and that's the danger. But you know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to speculate further because, as I said, I'm, I've not given up hope for Gonzalo, and I'm, I, you know, until I know for a fact that you know there's been bad effects on him i'm not going to speculate beyond that uh johan thank you for that super sticker yaroslav says gentlemen hit that like button please thank you yaroslav for that super chat Uh, cinema pt says guys thank you very much for everything you are doing keep it up my prayers are with crp plus one plus three 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 thank you for that gabriel mcmillan says we need to talk about energy options for europe Well, energy options, Um, uh, nuclear power. Uh, We're not going to get it because the Greens are against it. And anyway, it takes decades to build the things. And we've lost a lot of our expertise. Hydrogen, lots of talk about hydrogen. It might work eventually, but it's still very much in its early days. Um, Liquefied natural gas, there's finite amounts of it. It's expensive. You have to build the terminals. You have to build the processing plants. Of course, you can do it, but it's going to be a very, very expensive option. Or, of course, you can build more windmills. (laughs) And I'm sure that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Uh, Poppy, thank you for that super sticker. Stop asking for my name. Says, have you guys heard of Jay Dyer? He's a geopolitical analyst, philosopher, and Orthodox Christian. I think he would be a great guest. Yes, I have. He's good. Yes. We'll, We'll try to reach out. To Jay Dyer, Alan B says, hello, everyone. I would like to know if you have any news on Gonzalo. I have always had a feeling that something could happen to him, but I hope I'm wrong. I hope Gonza is safe and in good health. We, ha- we, so, we share your so, hopes. That's yeah. all we have. Yeah. Yeah. Naboja, thank you for that super sticker. Dr. Chino says, any thoughts on AAP in India winning the Punjabi state elections? Is AAP in a position to absorb the Congress party's remaining base? I don't know, and I'm not an expert on Indian politics, Indian internal politics, which are very complicated and which are the overriding interest of Indian people. If you go to the Indian media, you will find that that's 99% internal politics, very little coverage of external politics, of of foreign affairs, such as there is, tends to be focused very much on regional issues, Pakistan, Pakistan those sort of things. When they do talk about world affairs, they always talk about them with intelligence and insight, or so I find. So, uh, but I'm not going to discuss internal in domestic Indian politics. I just don't know enough about them. Uh, five S's says that democracy has a flaw. Fools can elect anyone if they are in a majority. Well, <laughs> The, the 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 big the operative point there is the f- fools are in the majority. 
the assumption, the fundamental premise upon which democracy is based is that people are not fools. And uh, four, I still believe four, four, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, 456T123G says, how totally different the world would be if the intelligent and educated used their blessings to assist the downtrodden, which, by the way, is the only path to paradise. Yeah, absolutely true. Thank if you want to, uh, that's, sure. that's, it, that's the Christian message. We're in, we're in the Easter period. We're between the Western and the Orthodox Easter. So perhaps we should remember that. Jeff R. says, it seems to me Macron and the rest of Europe have shown the West is broken. They fear Le Pen is the needle that would pop their bubble. Election risk is they pull a Trump type all in against election. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with every part of that. In fact, uh, I, I mean, you know, any political leader who breaks through the European political class's grip and gains power is going to face enormous problems. Look what they did in Austria. Look what they did to the Freedom Party there. Look what they did to Sebastian Kurz. Look what they did to Salvini in Italy. I mean, these people take no prisoners. <laughs> Uh, Frederick says, uh, hi, I have listened to your analysis and it is a vital everyday dose of my information flow. Just wanted to hear what you know about RIM and their influence on the fighting in Donbass. Thanks again for your in-depth analysis. RIM. RIM. I'm not sure who they are. <laughs> I'm not quite sure who they are. Uh, I mean, there are lots of groups and formations and units, but... Um, um, I, I, I'm afraid I, I'm not going to pretend that I know every single one of them. I mean, when I next speak to somebody like, you know, Scott Ritter or uh, Jacob Dryson or those people who do follow these things with much more care, I'll ask who that is. But at the moment, I just don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, Colbury, thank you for that super sticker. Viva Fry says, uh, over 10,000 people listening and getting smarter in real time. Well done, gentlemen. Thank you, Viva, for that. Uh, John Carlos says, three legends, bit of a philosophical societal question, are the inevitable economic societal troubles the West will face in the near future necessary to wake up our populations to the negative realities of globalism slash social liberalism? God bless. I think that could be true. Question. I'd like to believe it. That's a very good question. Well, ultimately, it depends on us. I mean, the problem is, you know, if we have real systems collapse, which has always been my fear, by the way, then, of course, the experience is going to be really awful. But I hope we can avoid it. Yeah. Dan Noya says, war, famine, and total annihilation is okay as long as Hunter and the big guy's investments are protected. Well, Interesting. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, 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 I, I, I always refer to him, by the way, as the yeah. creative artist, <laughs> just to say. <laughs> That 10% for the big guy. Uh, Raul Modi says, um, apologies, this is a loaded question. I'd like to know your takes. Why are nearly all neocons or neoliberal uh, war lovers, non-religious, intellectual Jews? Newland, Kagan's, Blinken, Crystal, Pearl, no patriotism, no homeland. I don't think that they're all Jews. In fact, I'd say that if you look at the whole group as a, a, is in their entirety, many of them are not. I mean, look at Samantha Power, who, as far as I know, is not Jewish, for example. Hillary so I, I don't... Or Hillary Clinton, exactly. I mean, I don't think... Jake Sullivan. Jews. Jake Sullivan, exactly. I mean, so... Jen that's Saki. that's Jen Psaki, exactly. I mean, I you know, I think... Uh, uh, um, who was the one who was... Uh, Trump's um, UN ambassador, I forgot Bolton. the name. The, oh, oh, you have Bolton. Bolton, Bolton but the Indian woman, uh, the, the woman from... Oh, with an uh, Indian. Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley, exactly. So, I mean, I don't think that they're all... Uh, I, I think that's a misconception. What I think they are is an ideological group, which is a very different thing. I think that... They are, they're beyond ethnicity, they're beyond patriotism. They are the kind of demographic that Robert Barnes described. They exist outside states and outside religions, ethnicities, and all those things. Uh, Zariel says, as always, great show, great guest, and great team. Thank you both, as always, and get some rest, guys. Got to go and catch you on the flip side. Thank you, Zariel, for that. Uh, G-Dog says, China has the largest domestic green program on Earth. Yeah, 
This why not? <laughs> why, why not? I mean, they make lots of money on it. I mean, they have all the batteries, as I understand it. So, I mean, why, why shouldn't they? I mean, the, the Chinese, give it to them. Let's give it to them. I mean, they, they're, they're, they're very, very clever at sniffing out commercial opportunities. But as Robert Barnes said, look at what they do, not at what they say. Internally, China uses a lot of coal, for example. And it's buying more from Russia. Mason Green says, I farted. <laughs> That's a super chat. Thank you, Mason, for that. Uh, s- summer of 1970, will the Russians take Odessa? Any thoughts? I yeah, yes. I think I say yes. I mean, we'll get phase two. There'll be then more be attempt. Yet, yeah, I agree. And then, then there will be Sorry. more negotiations. There will be another pretense at negotiations. Zelensky, again, will refuse to sit down and concede anything. And then there'll be phase three, and that will, that will be Odessa, and that will be the end. I, I agree with that as well. Yeah. Uh, Mona says, let's not give Trump too much credit. For, for weeks, four weeks ago, Trump said he would send in jets and more artillery and do more. During his administration, he sent in weapons to Ukraine. He sanctioned Venezuela. He took us out of the Iran deal. I don't give him too much credit for anything. What I would say is that in the United States, he's the best there is at the moment. I mean, there isn't anyone else. And the, the thing with Donald Trump is that he goes through all the wrong moves until eventually he finds his way to the right one. And the problem with the current leaders is that they start with the wrong move and they stick by it. And that that's, makes, in the end, all the difference. Uh, Sticky Marks, thank you for that super chat. Praytap, thank you for that super sticker. Commander Crossfire says political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. Mm, that's Mao, Z- Mao five, Zedong's famous, famous claim. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 456T123G says, time to have a worldwide defense treaty for all, for all with horrific punishment for any violator. The truth is simple. Evil is concealed through complication, the prophet. This is this is uh, uh, what people have been talking about for for ages. But of course, how do you enforce a treaty like that? The, always the danger with these kind of structures is that you have to have an enforcer, and then the enforcer starts abusing their position. I mean, maybe a more effective way would be to have an international system based on states, which are, respect each other and observe international law. That would be a better system, maybe. Sparky says Biden's the most competent in his administration. <laughs> That's a scary thought. Uh, it is a scary uh, thought. Ad- Adrian, yeah. Said, yeah. Uh, Adrian says Le Pen can use the migrant issue of Ukrainians being stuck at the French UK border because the UK is not taking in 200,000 Ukrainians as promised. No. no, no, of course not. Absolutely not. I mean, uh, and she Adrian. can use it. Whether she will, I'm not going to try and guess. I mean, I'm not running her campaign. AD says, following your analysis, what will happen if NATO enters Ukraine? Will the Russian back off or will they counterattack? If so, how they how can they contain the battle in Ukraine? I do, I'm not sure how it will happen, and I'm not sure what the form of any Western intervention or Polish intervention in Ukraine would be. Um, but if the Poles go in, and the, I think there's a very real possibility, in fact, there's a very strong likelihood the Russians will fight them. And to be absolutely clear about this, the Russians possess weapon systems that the Poles have no answer to. I mean, they have no answer to Russian hypersonic missile technology, for example. And you could easily see Poles taking massive casualties and turning to their American and German and British friends and saying, save us. Uh, Tupac, thank you for that super sticker. Jane, thank you for that super sticker. Olga says, in situations like these, there is a huge risk for stage provocation. They need a real push, so it has to be huge. Absolutely, completely right. And, uh, um, you know, that's, that's, I, that's always, in, that's been, in my opinion, the strategy all along. It's always been, the, it's been what they've been trying to do. It's the only thing they ultimately have. And that's a huge, huge danger in Ukraine. Uh, Commando Crossfire says, we're leaving our beloved Odessa, but not for good and not for long. Those miserable killers, those fascist brats will be thrown out of our city. We will be back soon, comrades. That's a quote from Commando Crossfire. Must be from from, from a movie or a song. 
so quite possibly. It could very well be from yeah. the Second World War. Odessa, by the way, uh, um, uh, fought a heroic siege against the Germans during the Second World War. It was eventually captured, but there was a lot of resistance there. And eventually, it could very well be that that's what it's related to. Tanya, thank you for that super sticker. Tina, thank you for that super sticker. Zach says, Fed confiscated Epstein, Epstein tapes. Might explain things. <laughs> Mm. Very true. Wow. La, Lon, Lon Baker says, thank you, Alex Alexander and Robert, to sane voices in these tumultuous times. Commando Crossfire says, is there any chance that Moscow would be able to recoup their stolen reserves via courts? They are currently seeking legal action, or is it simply a show? We actually discussed that. We discussed this at length, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, in the video, just check out the, the video with Robert Barnes, and we yeah. discussed that. Uh, Jehang Je Jehangir says, abandoning military equipment in Afghanistan was also to launder equipment into the hands of the lunatics who can definitely do without them. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, there's a report circulating that the U.S. doesn't know where a lot of the weapons it's supplying to Ukraine are ending up. That the, the, the Pentagon itself is supposed to be worried about this and says that they're going into a black hole. That's a comforting thought. <laughs> yeah. uh, Gage Count says, if Le Pen wins the election, what effect would that have on the mutual defense pact with Greece and on Greek politics in general? Again, I'm going to say this. If Le Pen wins the election, I, 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 as, of the, as of the moment of this program, I haven't, we haven't, we're not there. And, you know, let's, let's, let's see it happen first before we discuss those sort of things in depth. My own guess is it will not have any effect I think Le Pen will continue the uh, uh, alliance, the friendship with Greece. Yeah. Uh, Lockbert, thank you for that super chat. Joy, thank you for that super chat. David S., thank you for that super sticker. Commander Crossfire says, what are your thoughts on the economic futures of the new republics? Could they join SCO to bypass embargoes, legal legality of citizens? Could they travel, etc.? Could Russia force the UN somehow to recognize? I think sooner or later, the new republics will join Russia. I think that's only a question of time. South Ossetia is already making moves to that effect. And over, over some, uh, there will come a point in time when you're going to get referendums in Donbass, uh, Kherson, all of these places, and they will vote to join Russia. Of that, I have no doubt at all. Bev Guest, thank you for that super chat. Uh, Nitswitch, thank you for that super chat. Good program. Thank you, Nitswitch. Enrique Hidalgo says, Donbass did not sign the Geneva Conventions. Very true. No, of course not. Well, uh, not true enough. I still so, think that you probably find that they're bound by them, but, though. And the Russian army is, and the Russian army is running this campaign. So I would have thought that they have overriding responsibility to ensure that the Donbass militia does abide by the Geneva Conventions. Zach Boyle says, can we find a reason to send Fauci to the trial? <laughs> Very true, Zach. C Commando Crossfire says, could individuals in third countries like Canada bring legal action against companies that banned Russia, Russians based on ethnic origins or HR violations? It's a very, very good question. It's problematic because you would have to face the problem always in these sort of things of legal standing. I mean, you are, in, in certainly in common law, English-based systems, English common law-based systems, such as those in Britain, Canada, and the United States, you have to show that you are personally affected in order to bring a court case. You can't just bring a court case on behalf of someone else. So that, that it seems to me, is going to be a major problem. But, you know, who knows? Perhaps there are ways around that. Um, I understand, for example, that a sports association is very upset about the banning of Russian and Belarusian tennis players from Wimbledon. So conceivably, they have legal standing in this kind of case. They're the ones who set out the rankings. So we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, don't underestimate the difficulties. Sebastian Perez, thank you for that super chat. Uh, Lich Gore says, funny after... The left and neocons called everyone an NAZI. In the end, they support literal ones. Yep. Yeah. Well, we, we mentioned true. it. Yeah. Very true, yeah. We did mention that, yep. Uh, Darren says, can we do another 30 minutes? <laughs> Thank you, Darren, <laughs> for that super chat. Kaliu says, we should start a petition on change.org to demand those organizations to look into the disappearance of uh, Gonzalo Lira. 
Yeah. A petition is a is a good idea, but it's, it's, it's good... everywhere now. So um, absolutely, yeah, everyone is. It's not as if they don't know. And now. and Alex has made the point that the Chilean embassy in Warsaw knows about this. So we'll see what they yeah. can. And do. the and the ministry as well now. And the ministry, the, ministry, the foreign ministry yeah. knows, uh, obviously, obviously. Uh, Matt Lass says, was Liz Truss reviving the 100-year-old White Feather campaign by having British men joining the fight in Ukraine? Well, that's, uh, that's, uh, that, by the way, relates to an event that happened during the First World War when uh, it's, it's a myth more than a reality. Uh, uh, men who, you know, young men who were seen in the streets and who were not enlisted in the army, women used to give them a white feather as a sign that they were cowards. Well, I hope we don't go quite to that point in Britain. I would strongly advise any British person deluded enough to go and fight in Ukraine to think twice and don't do it. I agree. Don't listen to Liz Truss. Uh, Jamie Lee McFadden says, I lived in Kharkov for over a decade and I am concerned about what could have happened. Thank you, Jamie Lee, for that. And um, let's see, one second. Pull up some more questions here. Um, from Signor says, did London just claim they used a sub to finish off the Moskva? No, London has not claimed that. And, and if a British submarine entered the Black Sea, then uh, Turkey would be implicated in this. And I don't really believe that, to be honest. I don't think that Erdogan would, uh, would conspire with the British to, uh, just to sink um, a Russian missile cruiser. I think even Erdogan isn't that, um, well, unbalanced as to do something like that. So, I, I, you know, I, I, we, we don't know very much about this. Um, people who have looked at these pictures that have been circulating, I think the predominant view is that it was probably an internal explosion caused by um, a fault in one of the S-300, very old S-300 anti-aircraft missiles there. But look, you know, let's wait and see. There will be a Russian report eventually, and that will tell us more. Uh, Paolo Haro, thank you for that super sticker. Euro Gabor says, after making a killing on Hunter, Elensky's street pharmac pharmacist has been nominated to the businessman of the year. Wonder why. Hmm. Thank you for that, Euro Gabor. Uh, Waldo World says, I think Europe is dead and that the Europeans know it. It would explain why they vote as they do. Why worry about the future when Europeans simply have no future? I think we discussed this during the course of the programme. I don't think the leaders of Europe think that it's dead. I don't think the people of Europe think that it's dead. What we're seeing, though, is incredibly bad policies. And, of course, what is happening is that Europe, as a, as a culture, a civilization, is dying. I mean, it is losing its potency. All I say is compare, go, just just... Go back to the 1960s and look at who was active in the 1960s. I mean, you had artists like Picasso, for example, still working in the 1960s. Show me an artist in Europe who is comparable to Picasso today. Show me one. True. Uh, I'm not uh, Euro Gabor says about I... philosophers, writers, musicians, all of the rest. Mm -hmm. Euro Gabor says, I hope Orban's 10.7 million, 10 million euro bet in Casino France will bear a jackpot. I want to see him chuckle again as he did in 2016. False Jupiter's fall, not to descend. <laughs> well, we'll see. I would never gamble against Orban. He's a very shrewd person. All right. And those are the... Uh, questions in the comments alexander thank you everybody wow. for a great that was a great live stream with robert barnes was, and of course we always thank robert barnes and we of will we leave it there yeah. take care everybody